Imagine this world without chikungunya, dengue fever, Ebola, diarrhea, influenza, malaria, tuberculosis, or even without sexually transmitted diseases. I see some of my happy friends in the audience there. Yes, guys, no epidemic, no pandemic, no antibiotics. A world where a doctor can perform a surgery in your open garage without the risk of infections, or we being happy, leaving our food outside for days without it going bad. No fridge, no freezer. A world where we are not scared of picking up our fallen food from the dirt and eating it back again. Sounds like a perfect world to live in. This is fantastic. But with some small inconveniences. For example, no bread and yogurt for my breakfast. No vinegar for my salad. No soy sauce for my Chinese fried noodles. No beer, no wine, no cheese to party with my friends over the weekend. And even worse, no chocolate and wine for my partner on Valentine's Day. Seems like a small price to pay for the well-being of humanity, but is it really a small price? We humans, one single species, recently evolved, master of this planet, have been dominating this world for our convenience. But we fail to realize that there is an alien world populated by an estimated 1,000 billion invisible species that are silently shaping and ruling our world. These invisible aliens, ladies and gentlemen, are the microbes. Microorganisms so tiny that they are invisible to our naked eye. Let's analyze what would happen if they just disappear from our planet. This place will suffer from major food crisis. No healthy plants, no healthy animals, food will be scarce, and the price will hike. Animals too will suffer because of the absence of bacteria in their gut. They will have enormous difficulty digesting the little food they get to eat. This will be a hungry world. A suffocating and polluted world. Increase in air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. The amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases will skyrocket, leading to global climatic changes. Less oxygen for us to breathe. This, again, will be a suffocating world. A gigantic waste bin where nothing rots. This is how our planet will look like. Without recycling of nutrients, we will be walking among mountains of dead trees and animals and piles of our own domestic waste. The ocean will become a cemetery of dead aquatic animals floating with pungent smell. This will be a really dirty world. I see some worried faces. Don't get scared so early. These microbes, ladies and gentlemen, have been here for billions of years since the creation of life, well before the evolution of man. But surprisingly enough, we are more microbial than human. The latest estimates suggest that there are approximately 
53 to 75 percent of cells in our body which are microbial. And this collection of microbes is being called the human microbiome and is a gold mine of information for our health. They occur everywhere on our body, our skin, our nose, our mouth, our gut, and other places where you can't imagine. It's true. But why is it that our perception towards those microbes is so bad? Why do we tag them as germs? It all started when we first discovered that some of those microbes could cause diseases. And eventually, we end up grouping all those microorganisms as disease causing agents. Our modus operandi for the last two centuries has been to exterminate them rather than to live and synchronize with them. We've been over-obsessed with cleanliness, overuse of antibiotics, overuse of antibacterial cleaning agents, thinking that our life would become better and this world will become a perfect place to live in. As a biologist, I would like to invite you to view these microbes from a different perspective. Why? 99% do not cause disease. Why we see only that 1%? Instead of seeing them as aliens, why don't we consider them as an integral part of our human ecosystem, where the microbial cells and the human cells are working in a perfect symbiosis in many different ways. For instance, right from birth, these microbes start their colonizing process. And the transfer of microbes from the mother to the newborn is a crucial process for long-term health benefits. And studies have demonstrated that those who are born via natural delivery acquire more vaginal and other types of microbes that reduce the risk of allergies and asthma as compared to those born via caesarean. Breast milk is equally important to prevent allergies, diabetes, and even obesity. 30% of the bacteria found in a child's gut are associated with breast milk. And it is these guys who are the programmers of our metabolism and our immune system. When it comes to diet, People often say, you are what you eat. Allow me to say, tell me who are your microbes, and I'll tell you what you are. There is a direct link between our health, the microbes, and our diet. The microbes, they digest food and liberate nutrients. They produce bioactive compounds and they degrade toxic chemicals in our body. Certain plant-based food diet rich in fiber increase the bacterial diversity in our gut and that confer anti-diabetic, anti-obesity and anti-cancerous properties. The Hadza people in Tanzania has got one of the highest diversity of microbes in their gut. No allergies, no diabetes, no cancer, no obesity, no heart disease. These guys consume more than 600 different species of plants and animal 
every year. How many different species do we consume? We can count them on fingers. Bacteria also control our appetite. Back there in the 1980s and 1990s, some claim that we had a higher diversity of gut microbes, and this could possibly explain why during that time we used to be skinny. So could the microbes be really tweaking the ways in which we gain weight or lose weight? They do. By controlling our appetite-related hormones and sending signals to our brain and telling us, hey, hang on, I'm full, give me a break. They also reduce excess fat around our waist in here. Oops, I've got some in here. I think it's high time for me to communicate with my microbes. So ladies and gentlemen, these gut microbes are fantastic, but are you guys willing to swallow a pill full of poop? Or go for a fecal transplant? Sounds a bit weird. But surprisingly, this is what some doctors in the USA are advo advocating these days to treat intestinal diseases. Having said all these, ladies and gentlemen, I believe the major problem we are facing with is the loss of connection with those microbes. I bet we must have been the last generation of children enjoying free entertainment from nature. I can still remember my good old days swimming in the river, swallowing the dirty water, drinking tap water, drinking raw cow's milk from the farm, eating my food without washing my hands, no antibacterial soap or whatsoever. We hardly had any problem. So let's connect and leave with those microbes. But how? First, understand that the human microbiome has got microbes that are important players in our body, and we share the message. Second, encourage future mothers to opt for natural delivery, if possible. I guess Doctors should take the lead in here. Exclusively breastfeed babies for six months, if possible. Let's cut down on fats, proteins, and artificial sugars. Consume more plant-based diet. If we want to choose, we can go for those colored ones green leafy vegetables, and those rich in fiber. Why not get back to the 1980s, 1990s with our famous bread murum, batu murum, tujimun bizemanze. Let's not overprotect our children. Let them play freely in nature and enjoy the microbes. We did that. We did not turn that bad after all. Let's not overuse antibiotics and put a lot of stress on our good hormones. Cleanliness is part of our daily life, but we should not overdo it. It might cause more harm than good. I would like to end with the lyrics of a popular song, but slightly modified by a microbiologist. We are the world, we are the microbes, 
They are the one to make a brighter day, so let's start living with them. It's a choice we are making to save our lives and those of our future generation. Long live our microbes. Thank you.